Okay, hello, welcome to this fifth lecture, I believe. No, sixth. Fifth was the guest lecture previously with Dr. Michael Burton and Susan Burton. And now we're following up, of course, today, this afternoon, with student presentations by the Honor Society. And, of course, the Student Honor Society is run, um, organized, chaired, sponsored by the very capable Dr. Nadine Morris, so I'm going to call her up here in just a second. Uh, first, let me just say how wonderful it is to see such a great turnout. Okay, yes, I mean, I know, you know you're all here supporting your fellow students, so that's great. Um, I'm sure that they're very happy and probably nervous and excited at the same time. But uh, and the faculty, yes, welcome. Uh, thank you uh, for showing up as well. Um, hopefully, we will have more turnouts like this at these sorts of events moving forward because, as I say, these faculty lectures are ongoing. They're you know, going on for this previous semester, and they're ongoing all semester um, for the spring here, and they will continue into the fall, so just keep watching out for updates and things like that, and keep talking to your profs and keep being interested in what they're doing, and also your fellow students, and keep showing up to these events. Um, yes, it's uh, better for everybody. Okay, so without further ado, I am going to call up Dr. Nadine Morris will tell us a little bit more about the Honor Society and how things will proceed. Come on up. Okay, good afternoon, good evening. Um, thank you so much for coming out, really appreciate it. The Honor Society, um, the objective is basically to encourage students to prepare a platform so that our students here can get some experience with what it feels like to present. Um, I know they do it in their classroom, but we're just trying to reinforce that and develop some confidence. My students here today, they're a little bit nervous, um, but I'm sure they'll do great. But generally, the idea of the Honor Society is one, to acknowledge the students who are doing well academically and try to create an environment where they can be strengthened in what they're good at. Um, so today, as we, um, our presentation, we're going to have the first presentation based on Didi and Uber. And what we're going to ask is that you keep your um, questions until the end of the first presentation. We'll have about 10 minutes of yes. questions. Very nice, gentle, kind questions for my students. Soft, please. <laughs> and then we will continue to the second presentation. Okay, again, thank you so much for coming. And if you have questions about the Honor Society, I'd be very happy to answer those. But today, the focus is on the Honor of the Students. So our first presentation is going to be um, done by Nicole and Rita, and they'll be talking about Uber and Didi in China. Thank you.
because some service of Uber is against the local law in these countries. Then they lose, they lose the local government support, and that's why Uber failed. Next, I want to introduce something about DD. DD is a Chinese free car hailing cab, which was founded by Cheng Wei. This guy. In 2012. And now the CEO of DD company is called Liu Qing. At first, DD company has 45.6% market share and represents in 178 cities in China. After that, DD and Kuai another car calling company, chose to merge. Then, DD becomes the biggest company in China over the whole car calling industry. But we all know that China is a huge market. Of course, Uber want to enter it and earn more profit. So in 2014, Uber let itself become a competitor of the DD. After a long time competition, Uber finally failed. So let's think about why Uber did fail. I have some reason. The first one is small market share. As I mentioned, before Uber entered the Chinese market, Didi has already become the biggest company in China. In China. It has the biggest market share, which Uber cannot beat it on this point. So another approach taken by Uber is to charge a lower price. They choose to give the sub some subsidies to the customers and drivers. I think can pay a little money for a car. But Didi also can do that. So during the whole 2015, Uber can not get any profit. Without a profit, a company finally chose to withdraw the market. Also, Uber's payment method is single. The customer only can use Alipay or cash to pay the car fare. But in Didi app, the customers can also use QQ and WeChat in addition to this payment method. Also, Uber company as a foreign company is very important to get a local government support. But now Uber cannot get that. Robert Solomon, an author of a book called Vision, Global Vision, in that book she said, China's infrastructure, financial market, and the banking system are underdeveloped to these countries. So for the first world, for the West firm, it's hard for them to operate in China. So Uber managers will find that the Chinese political and numerical environment is different from their own country. They will feel some trouble when they want to earn into this new market. Also, Chinese customers' tastes are very different from the Western peoples. When the foreign company find it's challenging to adapt their product and service to meet the specific need of the Chinese customers. Finally, Uber as a foreigner, foreigner company, they should try to find a right local business company to add a partner. Because a right local business company has a better handle on the economic, political, and legal system they can help the foreign company to fix the risks they face. So the final results of the final reason cause the Uber failed is that Uber tried to tackle a risky and complex market of all. They should try to find a company like DD as a partner. And the DD company helped them to save the Uber's cost pin which means 
they don't move, pay so much money on to the compete with DD on to reduce the car fare. Then things will go better. Now let's welcome Rita to continue to discuss why DD succeeds in Chinese market. in Chinese car calling markets. Actually, DD is the first Chinese car calling app in, in China. And it's very convenient to, for the workers to use to go to work. And it's also very convenient for the students to go to school. And it's very, it is very easy to find in many kind of apps. Like in the WeChat, you can find it in the wallet. And then you can click into find the DD in the service. And finally, this app will, will help you to locate where you are now. And you can type in where you want to go. Then you can click this button. And in a few minutes, the, DD, the, the taxi driver will call you. And uh, compared to the Uber, DD has many advantages. Like this, they do not have any extra safety problems. Because Uber's slogan is the private car service. But DD provides a taxi car service. That means the DD users do not have to worry about safety problems. And DD also use some effective strategy to compete with other companies, like the merging other companies in the Chinese car calling markets. After Uber entered the Chinese car calling markets, DD and Quedi merged together, and both of them covers about 80% Chinese car, Chinese car calling markets. That means DD will cover more cities in China. And it, this also provides DD the more assets and investment to compete with other countries, with other companies, especially with DD, with Uber. Every company exists is to earn, earn, earn a profit. And, only in the 2015, DD Uber was suffered a lot at that time. They used the ineffective strategy to compete with DD. And only in the 2015, Uber lost about $1 billion to compete with other, com with other com companies. And that, at that time, it's a better opportunity to DD to buy Uber. And also, DD have many kinds of payment visors than Uber. First, you can find the QQ app. You can find DD in the QQ app. And also find DD in the WeChat we always use. And you can also find it in the Alipay. And you also can pay it by cash. Actually, DD have many influential investors, like the China Merchants Bank. China Life Insurance Company, the Tiger Fund, also the Apple, and two or three the leaders of Chinese international in, in internet companies, the Tencent and Alibaba. Because of those influential investments, it gives DD the opportunity to work abroad and to do some researches in the overseas market. So in 2017, DD invest in the Brazil car calling market called 99 taxis, and it will help DD to expand their business in the Brazil. DD also set up the lab in California, which is focused on the big data security and the self-car driving technology. The most awesome thing is DD have come out an English version app, which is convenient for the English speakers. And only in the 2016, there was about 28 million tourist, foreigner tourists visit this app and use it. It is very convenient for the foreigners to use this app to call the taxi in China. So, as DD entered the overseas markets, 
DD should learn something, they will face the same problem like Uber when the Uber entered the Chinese car calling market. The first lesson they need to learn is never take the risk alone. Uber and Lyft, both of them the, are the car calling app, and both of them come into China at the same time. But they use a different strategy to compete with other companies. Lyft set up a partnership with local government, and they have a co co cooperation with DD. So DD will have Lyft, Lyft to compete with other companies. And this is the main reason why Uber left the Chinese car calling market, and Lyft still in the Chinese car calling market. This is also the reason why DD set up a partnership with the 99 Tens in the Brazil, because this company will not only help DD to expand their business in the Brazil, they will also help them to bring to expand the business in the Latin American markets. The culture is very important. As DD enters the overseas markets, they need to adopt some of the culture to fit in the environment. They need to learn something, learn the culture to show that they are now in the, their country and it is very convenient for the, the local user to use their app. DD also need to use some effective strategy to, lo to attract the local investment. It will show that they have the convenience to compete with the local, com local car calling markets. And DD also need to face the political environment. Different countries have different political rules. DD should not try to change their, their rules. And instead of this, DD should change their own rules, even set up a new system to compete with the local <coughs> car calling companies. So DD is still on their own way to expand their business in the overseas market. It will be very exciting to see whether you DD will success or fail in the overseas market or in the local Chinese car calling market. That's all for presentation. Yes, okay, we have two more presenters, but we will take questions. Please don't make them too long, but if anybody has any questions for our panelists, yes. Uber was initially... Oh. Uh, I have a question for Rita. Do you believe that DD has the ability to be successful abroad? Yes. And um, can you explain why? Uh, there will be a condition. Um, DD should directly solve the problem in the political and the culture and the economic rules. They will succeed if they change their rules and even set up a new system in the overseas market. They will be successful in the whole world. Thank you. Do you want to take a shot at that? Oh, no. Nicole, no, okay. Uh, I have a question for Nicole. Uh, Uber was initially attracted to many Chinese passengers. What should DD do in China to give a similar service? Okay. Um, I think the most uh, fast way to attract customers is to charge a lower price to the to the consumer. So as the Uber did when it competed with the DD company. So DD also can use that way to attract more customers. But DD company should pay attention that um, to do not give too much subsidies to the drivers or the customers. Because even though they use this way to attract more customers, they will still face a loss because their expense are increased. So my advice is DD company can create many new activities <coughs> They can give the special subsidies to the drivers on special days, like the festival, like holiday, like today, the first day of Goka. So they can so the customers will have the interest 
in this app. They will keep using it. Then the DD company will be more successful. Thank you. I have a question for you. Uh, those that the CD published an uh, English version app, uh, do you think it will also be successful in China? Yes. And I think that more and more people come into China and they will use the taxi to go everywhere. They need to go to the work or take a trip. So this English version app will be popular in China. How about the driver? Uh, what What do you think if DD goes out, goes abroad, and how can they attract the drivers? Like, the driver is the labor market for them. So, um, I think they can, like I mentioned before, they can give more subsidies to these drivers. The drivers can get higher profit if they work for the DD company. I think that's the first thing. your speech and the topic is attractive for us and here I have a question uh, as we know these days Chinese government has published a series of regulations to DD company so do you think there are any uh, influence to DD company and what are they? Thank you. Uh, I do think Chinese neopolicy will bring some influence to the DD company for example, uh, now if, uh, pe if people want to be a driver of the DD company, they must uh, pass some text. Also, the government has a higher standard for the company's car. So that means DD company must pay more money to hire the customers or to buy a new car. So at the beginning, the company may face some loss, but for a long term, the DD company's quality will improve. And um, in modern society, more and more people seek for, seek for the high quality service. And they are willing to pay high price to make them more comfortable. So if the, com if the DD company has a higher quality, they will like to use it, even though the, the price is much bigger, uh, much higher than before. So I think the government's influence to the DD company is more positive. Thank you. I have one question for you. Uh, why those investors invest in DD? <clears throat> because DD is not only develop their business in the car calling service. They also focus on some big data security and they have developed some technology to change their situation. So it is very potential <coughs> to invest the DD. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I, I found that uh, uh, sorry, I just found that uh, I want to let you to be relaxed because I think you are a little awkward. Uh, I want to ask a question about those two companies, about their profit. What do you think their profit in the future? Because I've heard some information that uh, some companies in America were stealing some taxi controlled by the computer. Do you think maybe a period past, those two, those two big companies will to don't need any drivers just to get some car controlled by the computer, and they can be the largest companies to control the taxi. And what do you think? Those two companies against the, the traditional taxi drivers. I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Drivers take you by personal, or the take the driver to take you to the anywhere. Will you talk to the taxi drivers on your way? Uh, because this is some about technology. I I said 
because if you have a company like that and uh, you can control more taxes just controlled by the computer but not drivers I believe that you will want to don't need any drivers but just use computers to control this taxi and get more profit because now these com two companies just get profit as connection to those uh, to those people need taxi and those drivers and just to get money from those connections but if they can get those get profit from those taxi direct, directly they can just control those taxi controlled by computer I think maybe it is something bad for those drivers and maybe will hurt them in the future that is, that is also the reason why DD developed their technology and set up a lab in California I think at least the, now the space of the technology is much higher than the neighbor, than the real neighbor. So why not we choose to combine the technology and the pers and person together to make it easier to drive? But there still will be a person to ask your driver. You can talk when you when you are on travel. The things will be go better.
I would suffer starvation. And and I will I, and I would pray for the heaven that please give me some food. But in 1978, change is happening, and there is a reformation uh, in 1978. Um, during the, during this year, uh, during uh, and during and uh, during these years, uh, the Chinese uh, the Chinese market the Chinese market opens up, and allowing international companies to come into China. Also, the international companies brought the inter their international goods to the consumers. This not only uh, br not uh, this not only uh, bring Chinese consumers that make Chinese consumers decide what kinds of goods they can be choose, but also uh, make the Chinese culture become uh, diversified. And now. Let's come after the 1978. Oh, sorry, sorry. And there are some famous and there are some famous and there are some famous brands coming after the 1978, like Starbucks coffee and KFC. Also, I want to mention one important thing, that is MSU. <laughs> yes. And M uh, and MS because because of the reformation in 1978, if if this re reformation uh, didn't happen, the MSU won't won't came into China, and we won't see our dear teacher and dear foreign friends. Yeah. <laughs> and let's come to the after the 1978. Okay, now let's continue the timeline. In 2001, the China entered into the WTO, the World Trade Organization. It helps China involve the International Economic Corporation, Extend Act Force, or Develop Industries. And now next, in 2009, what happened this year, you know. Double Eleven Singles Day, right? You know, the China, China Double Eleven Shopping Carnival appeared in this year for the first time. And you can compare it from the 1955 to 2009. A big difference is between the Chinese consumer demand goods and services. For example, the most purchase, most Chinese household depends on government tickets in 2055. And now the most purchase was done online because the Chinese consumers have more income and too free to buy what they want. And now you can see here the Tmall shopping online. And of course like the Jingdong or Alibaba, the similar the topic the shopping online. And that the Chinese consumers now is only buy something for like a necessary goods and also like the makeups, clothes or uh, cars maybe are like for just for convenience. So, and also you can look at this year, two, 2011. What happened? The presidency proposed the Belt and Road Initiative. What does it mean? It's uh, the China actively divided the binomial side with the neighbor countries or cities along the along the line. And the China try to find out the ways or of economic growth and achieve the globalization rebalancing. And now you can hear, for example, the Chinese invested the railway into Kenya. And now because of this, how has this affected international companies? So firstly, do you think the Chinese consumers are always keeping a high level of brand loyalty. Not really, right? Here is a very example here, McDonald's. 
When McDonald's came into the Chinese market, you can see here, look at this picture. The McDonald's was very new or fresh for Chinese consumers. And you can see here the people, uh, Chinese consumers are standing in line for to uh, order the meal because uh, it was considered as hip, fashionable, or for working thinking, all like that. And now, what happened? The demand of McDonald's is falling. Because it considered was it considered as nothing special before that, right? And now because the Chinese consumers want more Asian flavors, like we are I am Chinese. I has keep I have kept the Chinese traditional eating habit for 20 years, so it's hard for me to change forever. And at this time, the local Chinese firms comes out, like this, the Yongke Sobe milk, the like for breakfast, or I think so, and the Kung Fu, the Chinese traditional meal restaurant. And now, you know, the McDonald's is in an embarrassing position, situation. So the McDonald's wants to change this bad situation, and then they produce the new goods like the Chinese uh, Chinese style eating for like this uh, chicken and rice meal or the steam van or so for Chinese consumers. And you can see here, this in Chinese, 中式風味新選擇. It means Chinese style taste new choice. Alright, so let's continue to find out what's the factors of changing demand. And now, uh, and comparing with uh, before, Chinese, pe Chinese people began to purchase from the lowest quality goods to the highest quality goods. Why? And there are some factors about that. The first one is they, they prefer to the luxury goods. And these three luxury goods are Chinese people are preferred to. And I want to mention that the Meritage is a, uh, is a brand, uh, is a brand uh, which sells the red wine. Red wine. Yeah. And also, some Chinese agents began to travel to overseas and uh, brought back the overseas goods and then sells to the Chinese consumers. Uh, in the, in, maybe in, in our WeChat, we can see that some, student, some of my classmates, they, go, they travel to the overseas and ask the um, people whether they, uh, they need fashionable goods, fashionable clothes, fashionable makeup. <laughs> yeah. And they, uh, in, China, in, Japan, in Japan or Korea, then they brought back into the China and sell these Chinese consumers. And next I want to talk about is imported cars. <laughs> uh, Lamborghini and, Royce, uh, and Rolls Royce are two of, the, uh, two of the most expensive car in the world. I'm dream of buying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chinese consumers prefer these uh, uh, these these kind these kind of cars because they want they wanted to um, they want their cars to get new functions and fantastic lookings. And besides, some wealthy people they prefer to go to the high end expensive mall to purchase things. And second one I want to talk about is because of increased income. At increasing income, thanks to an increasing income, that the middle middle class grows very fast. And I want to talk about the young generation because the young generation are the main forces of the middle class. And they, buy, they usually buy things on the internet because it is very convenient. 
and they, they could get more information on the internet. And they usually buy Nike and uh, Adidas. For example, uh, and besides, I want to talk about is consumption. Until now, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese economy has grows 70% per year. And it, it is predicted that uh, by 2020s, uh, the, the $1.5 trillion goal will be reached. The third factor I want to talk about is increased flexibility, which means the consumers can buy their goods at anywhere and anytime. And this thanks to the e-commerce, which is re referred to the internet. Because of the internet, uh, consumers can buy different kinds of products and, uh, great and in a great quality goods on the internet, like Tian in Tianmo and Taobao. Also, uh, many corporations uh, use this use the Tianmo and Taobao. Uh, they sell their their different kinds of goods on the internet. Uh, to let consumers know that uh, their, uh, to let the, uh, let them know that their goods is also um, is also good as the famous brand. And as we talk about the changing of the consumer demand, how about the market? Does it change or just maintain? Let let Mandy talk us. Now, according to the article Doing It Their Way, it says the Chinese market is one of the world's most sophisticated customers market, demanding most expensive goods. What does it mean? People don't like to eat, to drink, to use the same ground all the time. Right? And you can see here, because of the Chinese consumers, the population, and maybe just a small changing percent in demanding for one product will in fact in companies in a big way. I mean, just the changing, maybe just one percent, the companies will lose one billion consumers for Chinese, for, two, for Chinese consumers. And now, by the way, do not Please, please, please do not ignore the power of made in China. The China is growing up, and now you can find the label says made in China, maybe everywhere for clothes, for computer, for some parts in machine, for makeups, everything. You can find it. And now, for example, here you can see this is Huawei cell phone, right? And now. You know, Huawei, Huawei cell phones is now successfully against for the iPhone, 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 not orange, iPhone, iPhone. So the China is is standing up. So and finally, I believe foreign and Chinese uh, in Chinese brands uh, deserve uh, deserve equal respect, and not just only any of international brands that have made their own way to China. No matter whether the, the companies they live or, or stay, peak or be marginalized, so they all play an important role in, the, in, in educating the consumers and also enlightening the local companies over the years. That sums up the rise of China nicely. And the future, the future consumer market everywhere are going to like more Chinese. So when the Chinese consumers change the demands, the local and the international brands will will affect greatly. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Yeah, 
discuss questions for our panelists. I have a question for Frederick. You have listed the number of factors affecting prison demand, and which one do you think is the most important when comparing in 1955 and 2007? Okay, thanks for your question. And I think comparing with the 1955 uh, and uh, 20, uh, two, uh, 2010, I think there are two factors. The first one is uh, there are more choices that consumers can choose. Because after, as I mentioned, after the 1978, uh, uh, people have more choices to choose different kinds of goods. Uh, they can dis like like restaurants. You in the past, you o you can only have uh, a simple a simple and a and and the food and the boring food that make, makes you makes you eat, eating feel boring. And nowadays, because of KFC, Starbucks, and this international uh, rest international cooperation restaurants came in. Uh, people have more choices than to decide whether they can go to the Chinese restaurant or they can go to the foreign restaurant. Uh, and next, I want to talk about is uh, uh, in rising income. Because if you don't, if you don't have money, you can't go anywhere to have uh, anything to eat. Yeah. Uh, and because of the op uh, increasing income, like. Many people can go to like Starbucks or any other expensive uh, expensive international restaurants. They can uh, they can order expensive thing to eat, and that is a big difference uh, comparing to the past. Both, uh, actually, both groups, you guys did wonderful. That was really good. I learned an absolute lot. I really thank you for your presentations. You. Uh, my question uh, for you is, you mostly talked about the upper class and the middle class, how they have become more and more consumers, and they're buying luxury goods. What do you think about the lower class, Okay, people who don't have as much money? Are their consumer tastes changing as well, or are they staying the same? It depends, I think so. Because, you know, the upper class, they have maybe, why they have this, the, they are the local, uh, upper, upper class, because they have maybe, I think so, uh, they have their own profit, their own by maybe the big company or international companies, they have the great job. But why the lower class, maybe they have don't, the much more, uh, income for luxury goods. That's true. That's. I think. Mm, this is uh, depends on the ability for the lower class. They have tried to find out, find with their life. Yes, and so I think that's can. That is hard. It's hard to say, but I think that's it. And can I say something? Yes. <laughs> yes because, uh, actually, as I mentioned, the income is a very important thing. Uh, from the the average the average salaries in lower uh, in a lower class they uh, uh, in a lower class is lower from the middle class and the upper class. Actually, they have um, they have less possibilities to buy the luxury goods because they have to, uh, to consider uh, to buy, to purchase other things like their food, their house, uh, their houses because the live, uh, to live on this world is the most important not just buying the luxury goods is the most important Okay. Um, I will 
interesting question. Uh, and to get on to Darren's, yeah, you answered that very well. Actually, in China, compared to other countries, they found out that as people get poorer, they still buy stuff, but they buy less quality. So it comes with where you buy Rolls Royce in Shanghai. As you go farther west over to Orochi, you buy a lower car, but they still do it. But two questions for you guys. Um, the first is, when it comes to brand loyalty, that's a huge problem companies have in China. There is no brand loyalty, except for Apple and Starbucks. They're doing extremely well. The, every other company cannot get near them, and Chinese people continue to buy Apple and Starbucks. Uh, that's one question. Why do you think they are successful when Chanel have pulled out and other companies are pulling out? And so one of you can do that one. And the second question is, uh, that's an easy one. The second question is, in China, which is not expected, it's all about products. So it's Apple, Starbucks, showing you have it. But you go to Europe or the US, and luxury is nearly considered service. It's more moving towards a service industry. You understand? So when we want luxury in Europe and America, it's often service, not products. But in China, the service doesn't matter, it's more having an iPhone is what's important. Okay? So do you think China will move towards services like America and Europe have, or stay the way they are? There you go. Chinese consumers will. Uh, I think Chinese will moving to the service because uh, because in the developed country, the we can say that the service the service takes parts uh, takes part uh, the majority of the uh, the majority of consumers consumptions uh, uh, and as. And as, uh, for example, as you go into the store to buy a shoe, to buy, to buy shoes, uh, usually it's, uh, the, the cost of the shoe is cheaper, uh, is cheap, but the service, like the, like the saleswoman serves you and they help you to select things, these costs are, uh, are becoming uh, more, because this chain, uh, this chain related to different kinds of services, which also provides like different, uh, uh, which provide different, uh, uh, which provide different kinds of cost that consumers should pay. Uh, that also call, uh, that also um, provides different kinds of jobs, and jobs are, is very uh, is very important in China because the Chinese has a lot of populations, they, and lots of people have problems finding jobs. And this service, uh, this service uh, will, help, will help create more jobs for Chinese population. And why about, uh, Mandy, mm -hmm. what about Apple? Why are Apple and Starbucks doing so well? Why, what makes them special compared to other companies that have to pull up? Why? Because we have found out now that more and more Chinese consumers can decide to buy the Huawei cell phones like that. Why? Because of, it. Because of the quality. The quality of uh, Huawei cell phones uh, get better than before. And Chinese, maybe Chinese uh, consumers' minds a little changing. That's what it is. And in fact, to be honest, the Chinese, uh, Chinese consumers um, have a very common, you know, inter, uh, personality. That is, they love foreign friend, uh, brand, brands. Yes, this that's true. But I think, uh, well, when the China is goes up, I think it will be changed a little. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. The statistics shows that a actually the conspicuous consumption, the the rate of conspicuous consumption, uh, which means luxury goods. The demand for luxury goods is falling in recent years. Um, does that mean that Chinese people's appetite for goods is changing again? Because, yeah, the luxury goods is, the demand for luxury goods is falling. The, the stats show that. 
I just uh, I just said McDonald's. The demand of McDonald's is falling down. I mean, international international brand. Yeah. Uh. Well, the luxury, I mean, that kind of luxury goods for upper class, like for Chanel, Gucci, and some kind of boulevard things that they are falling. The demand for those very high-priced goods. And could you please give, if you say that, could you please give some evidence about that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I did a research paper on, uh, in John's class, and I was doing research about uh, conspicuous consumption, and the stats shows that the rate, uh, the demand for luxury goods is falling. Okay, and uh, uh, and I will do, I will do this kind of the research later, and uh, we will I we believe we will give you the better answer. Alright, thank you. <laughs> International brands are they uh, or stay the peak or be um, marginalized? They, I think, they both, uh, both of them, are play an important role in the uh, Chinese economy here, and both of them have the benefits or Chinese economy. So that's it. Uh, it's very, I would say, it's good for Chinese China and also. It's good for um, whatever foreign countries or um, foreign brands. for every country, like this, like the Kenya for Kenya. The Chinese invest the railway into Kenya just for, you know, the Kenya, China, uh, the Kenya people uh, have a more, it's more confidence for the trans or transport for to go other ways. And for Chinese, you know, Chinese, uh, Chi in China, Chinese consumers, the changing demand, we can't imagine what have, what the Chinese will need, so they have to build the the relationship with other countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think um, I think. How are you guys doing? Fine, fine. Okay, we'll, we'll take we'll just, we'll just take one more last one for the evening. <laughs> I have a question that uh, do you think that Chinese foods will be becoming more popular than the foreign foods in the future? Oh. Mm. In my opinion, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because uh, because uh, Chinese because Chinese food, for the Chinese food it has a very long history. And I just gave the gave some interesting example. 
Have you been heard the news about in Denmark they are suffering from the uh, yes uh, it's a it's a uh, oyster a kind of seafood and the, the, in Denmark the government was uh, was a few a few actions about uh, these kind of things but in China but in China it doesn't happen because. Chinese, uh, because Chinese people have different kinds of method to cook these things. So, so actually, Chinese people are the, uh, uh, actually these kind of seafood are afraid of Chinese people. Yeah. If they meet Chinese people, their number will be go down. <laughs> Okay, another round of applause for all four of our presenters.